Hello all, I am Arshana Bhuzwari, Assistant Professor, Computer Engineering Department at AISSMS Institute of Information Technology, Pune. Welcome back. Uh, so in this video, we are going to discuss the backward pass as a technique to determine the project duration. Okay, so we have already discussed the forward pass in the previous video. So by continuing with this particular example, we'll now for this example, now we calculate the backward pass. So first of all, before calculating the backward pass, we first understand what is the backward pass exactly, what are the timelines involved, are there in the backward pass. So backward pass is what? It is a process to determine the late start or late finish times for activities in the critical path method. Okay, so backward pass is a technique to move backward to the end result to calculate the late start or to find if there is any slack or any float in the activity. So any slack or any float in the activity means is there any time by which the particular activity can delay without delaying the succeeding activity or the overall project duration. So as in forward pass, we have seen there are the forward pass uh, deals with the two different timelines that is the early start and early finish. Same way in the backward pass, it is also having the two timelines are there. These two timelines are late start that is the LS and late finish that is the L. Okay. So first of all, we'll discuss what is the LS and LF, how to calculate the values for LS and LF, and then we'll uh, continue with the example to calculate the backward pass. Okay, so what is the late finish is first of all. So late finish is the latest date that the activity can finish. Is the latest date that the activity can finish without causing a delay to the project completion date. Without causing a delay to the project completion date, that is a very important thing over here. So now that is a late finish. So, but how to calculate a late start? Okay, so how to calculate a late start? In order to calculate the late start, we apply the backward pass technique and moving from the late finish means from the right side to the left side. From in backward pass, we are moving from the right to left, whereas in the forward pass, we are moving from the left to right. Okay, so when we are moving from the right to left, we take the last activity here in the backward pass that will an early finish. Do we early finish whatever the early finish of that particular activity that will take as the late finish time for the activity and then we'll calculate the late start for the same activity. Okay, so how to calculate that? So we can calculate it with this formula that is a late start is equals to late finish minus duration. Late finish minus duration. So if the late finish is the 30 days and the duration is 10 days, so LS will, it will be 30 minus 10 is equals to 20 days. So in this way, we can calculate the LS. If we have the values of LF and duration, we can calculate the LS that is the late start. Okay, so that is the late finish and late start we have seen here. Now we'll see for the same example as in the previous video we have seen for the forward pass. Now here we'll carry out the backward pass for the same example. Okay, so now you can see here in this diagram, the same example is here. Now this diagram is a complete diagram which contains all the values of forward pass and backward pass. But first of all, we'll see how to calculate the values for this example. Now, when we are saying the backward pass, we have to move from the right to left. So we take this, this as a first activity here because we are moving from the right to left. The last activity we'll start here. So here for this activity, what is the early finish? Early finish is 32. So same value we'll take as a LF. So LF is equals to 32 here. Now to calculate the early start, late start. Now to calculate the late start here. So let's start of all, let's start formula is what? LF minus duration. Late finish, so that is a 32 minus duration. Duration is four, so that is the 20. So in this way, we have to calculate for all the nodes. So now we'll go for the next node here. So as this 28 is the late finish, uh, late start for this particular edge. So this late start will act as a late finish for the preceding activities here. So that is for G, the late start is equals to 28. So 28 minus duration is equals to late start, sorry. So this particular late start will act as a late finish for this activity G. And now we have to calculate the LS. So LS is equals to what? 28 minus six is equals to 22. So late start will be the 22 day for the activity G. Now you can see here, for the activity G, there are two preceding activities are there, D and E, D and E. So we take this early, late start 
as a late finish for the both of these activities here. Okay, 22, 22 is copied here. Now we'll just my we'll just subtract the duration from it. 22 minus 3, that is a 19, and here 22 minus 10, that is a 12. Okay, we'll continue with this part. So 20, 12 is the late start for the activity D. So this 12 will act as a late finish for this activity B here. So 12 minus 7 is equals to 12. So 5 is equals to uh, the late start for the activity B. So this late start will act as a late finish for the activity A here. So 5 minus this 5, that is the duration, is equals to 0. So this activity can start by late as a at day 0. So this part, the activities on this particular path, we have calculated the backward paths. Now we'll go for the next part, next particular path. So up to this, we have calculated. Now we'll go for this particular path. So here, the 22 is a late start for this activity G. So we'll co copy this 22 as a late finish for the activity E. So 22 minus 3, that is a 19. Okay. And for this activity, there are the two preceding activities are there. One is E and one is F. So for F, we'll calculate. So 28 will, have, will act here as a late finish. So 28 minus this 5 is equals to 23. So 23 is a late start for this particular activity. Now, these two activities, E and F, these two activities are the preceding activities, are the two, act two next activities for this particular preceding activity C. So when we are considering this particular early finish for this activity, so we have to take the lower one. So this, this is the for this E, it is 19, and for F, it is 23. So out of these two, we have to take the less value. So which whichever is the lesser value, so 19 is less than 23. So we'll take this 19 as an early finish for the activity C. And from this, we'll subtract the 4, that is a duration, and we'll get here, that is a 50. Okay. Now for this also, for this activity also, there are the two next activities. So you can see here the early start for this, uh, late start for this is what? 5 and late start for this is what? 15. So out of these two, we have to take the less value. Whichever is the smaller value, 5 is the smaller value. So we'll take this 5 over here and it's going to be calculated. So now you can see this is the diagram where we have already calculated the forward pass and backward pass is also completed. Now you can see here, there is a difference between if we go by this particular path, there is no difference between the early start and late start or early finish and late finish. So when there is no difference between these two, this particular path, you can see there is no difference between these timelines. So here it is a zero float is here. Means these particular activities cannot be delayed by a single day even. This so the path from this activity to this is this is a critical path. Whereas you can see the another activities that is here, there is a difference 14 minus 28, 28 minus 14 is a 14. Means there is this particular activity is having the float of 14 days. This particular activity is having the float of 14 days. Means we can delay this activity by the 14 days without affecting the succeeding activity or the final project finished. Okay. Same with over here also and over here also. So these three nodes are not in the critical path, whereas nodes A, B, D, G, and H are in the critical path. Okay, so in this way, we have calculated the backward pass and we have identified the critical path in the project and either whether there is any float in the activity or not, that also we have seen. Okay, so thank you.